Well, Kyle didn't have a job, but one day he looked at a rented paper clip on his desk and decided to trade it on the barter section of the popular website Craigslist. He asked people to trade with him for anything of value, but was clear that he needed to trade up. He got a response almost immediately from a pair of young women living in Vancouver who offered to trade him a pen that looked like a fish. McDonald then bartered a fish pen for a handmade doorknob from a potter in Seattle. In Massachusetts, McDonald traded the doorknob for a camp stove. He traded the stove to a U.S. Marine sergeant in California for a 100-watt generator. In Queens, New York, he exchanged the generator for the instant party kit, <laughs> an empty beer cake with an illuminated Budweiser sign. <laughs> McDonald then traded the cake and sign for a ski-doo snowmobile. He borrowed a snowmobile all the way up to a, an afternoon with rock star Alice Cooper, which he promptly traded for a snow globe depicting the rock group Kiss. <coughs> then he approached Ak actor Corbin Burnson with the snow globe in exchange for a paid role in Corbin Burnson's movie called Donna on Demand. Hmm. Now, why would Corbin Burnson trade a role in a film for a lousy snow globe? Well, McDonald had done his homework. Corbin happens to be one of the biggest snow globe collectors on Earth, with a collection of 6,500 snow globes. Corbin went for McDonald's offer. And that's when McDonald took the role in the movie and exchanged it for a farmhouse in the town of Kipling, Saskatchewan. Mm. And the town, in turn, held a competition for the movie role. Mm. So now, McDonald has a house. But McDonald wasn't done yet. He put the farmhouse up for sale on his website. And mounted in the front yard was a giant red paper clip. <laughs> oh, oh, that's cute. <laughs> Found that God's experience caught my attention. After I read St. Paul's words in our lesson from Ephesians that we are to make the most of every opportunity, and I suspect most people are open to the idea of finding opportunities. So let's listen closely here to St. Paul's words. Be very careful, then, how you live, not as unwise, but as wise, making the most of every opportunity, because the days are evil. Therefore, do not be foolish, but understand what the Lord's will is. How do you make the most of every opportunity, while at the same time exercising caution so that you don't make a huge mistake? How do you make the most of every opportunity while at the same time seeking to understand the Lord's will? God's will is for you to have an abundant life. The abundant life consists of both the physical and spiritual. God wants us to have a rich, rewarding relationship with Him and with other people. But God also wants us to have our material needs. That. That's why Christ taught us to pray. Give us this day our daily bread. And that's why God gave us healthy bodies. And that's why God gave us good minds. God wants us to take advantage of every good opportunity. And of course, you and I have an additional bit of blessing. We live in a land of opportunity. God wants us to have an abundant life. God wants us to be able to meet our responsibilities to our, our families. God wants us to have our physical and material needs met. But sometimes, however, we are our own worst enemy. We sometimes sabotage ourselves. That's what sin is all about. We do not always make wise choices. And this is 
why St. Paul tells us to be careful how we live, not as unwise, but as wise. And that is why Paul writes about living foolishly. We sometimes are our own worst enemy. We sometimes make bad decisions, poor investments, unwise plans. We follow God's will for our lives spiritually, relationally, and materially. So, how do we avoid this? How do we make the most of every opportunity while avoiding treacherous pitfalls? Well, first of all, St. Paul tells us to keep a clear head. That makes sense, doesn't it? We make the best decisions when we are, when our brain is, is working well, the brain that God has given us. Paul writes, do not get drunk on wine, which leads to debauchery. Instead, be filled with the Spirit. I don't think I need to tell you there are addictions out there that are destroying people's lives. Alcohol is quite obviously one of the most serious addictions. As Roger, Rod, Richard Blummer was, has written, we drink for joy and become miserable. We drink for social ability and become argumentative. We drink for sophistication and become obnoxious. We, we drink to help us sleep and awake exhausted. We drink for exhilaration and end up depressed. We drink to gain confidence and become afraid. We drink to make conversation flow and become incoherent. We drink to diminish our problems and see them multiply. <laughs> <laughs> Many lives have been destroyed by addiction to alcohol. We could make a significant impact on the number of deaths from automobile accidents each year if we could only keep people from drinking and driving. But that's not the only addiction plaguing our society. We could make an enormous dent in crime in this nation if we could just stop the flow of illegal drugs. If you think drug use is a victimless crime, look at what it's doing to our innocent victims out there that are related to these crimes, our innocent children. And look what it's doing to the nations like Mexico, Colombia, and Afghanistan that are involved in feeding our, our appetite for drugs. And of course, we can get addicted to prescription painkillers as well. The truth of the matter is that addiction of all kinds are proliferating our society. In his book, Secret Life, Prize-winning poet, Michael Ryan tells the story of a lifelong addiction to seducing women. Is there such a thing as sexual addiction? Yes. After recounting his experience of being repeatedly abused when he was five years old, Ryan describes his adult life as a predator who was a drunk with his own sexual compulsion. All my talents, he recalls, all my good qualities as a human being were devoted to serving it, the addiction, and I was willing to sacrifice anything for it. Michael Ryan finally perceived the depth of his sexual addiction one day while I was driving to his friend's house in another state. He had already lost his teaching job and his marriage as well. Nonetheless, all he could think about during the trip was to was how he was going to seduce his friend's 15-year-old daughter. So gripped by this fear and panic, he glimpsed at his own fallen condition, his deep loneliness and despair, rescued by what he said was the grace of God. Praise God. Ryan turned his car around and drove home. There's something about modern life that seems to encourage addictions of all sorts. Dayline NBC carried several reports on the effects of gambling addiction. One report focused on the vulnerability of women to video poker machines located in places women are likely to frequent. One woman put her family into bankruptcy and lost her husband and two children. Another left her 10-month-old infant in a car 
for seven hours, and the child died. Men who had lost their homes through gambling debts allowed a reporter into one of their closed 12-step meetings. The stories they heard were heartbreaking. Tales of how families were destroyed by this addiction. There's something about modern society that feeds these addictions. Some people are addicted to pornography, some to shopping, some to their computer, some to their phones, some to video games, and some to snack foods. If we become addicted to anything that becomes an impediment to our being all that God has created us to be, we need to get rid of it. Amen. Can you look at anything in your life that is putting you in or pulling you in the direction of an unwise decision? Is there anything in your life that endangers your health, your relationship with others, but especially your relationship with God? It's time to turn around. St. Paul tells us to keep a clear head. He also tells us to keep a positive spirit. He writes, do not get drunk on wine, which leads to debauchery. Instead, be filled with the spirit. Speak to one another with psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. Sing and make music in your heart to the Lord. Isn't that wonderful advice? Speak to one another with psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. Sing and make music in your heart to the Lord. We like to be around someone who is always positive, always joyful, always brightening up the room, don't we? Sing and make music in your heart to the Lord. Reverend Douglas Meyer tells about a man who claimed to be the most accurate fortune teller in all the world. A man once came to this fortune teller and said he had only one real question about his future, and that was, how will my life end? The fortune teller gazed into the crystal ball and then announced, your life will end when you die. <laughs> <laughs> no wonder he was so accurate. <laughs> Well, man nodded, and then he said, Yes, but will I be happy? Ah, said the fortune teller. That has nothing to do with the future, but what you do in the present. He was right again, wasn't he? Mm -hmm. God's will is for us to choose to be happy this day and every day, to believe the gospel, to cherish the truth that all in all things God is with us, and we can be victorious any circumstance. Now that doesn't mean that we'll not go through difficult times. It means that we will not let our circumstance determine how we look at life. Rather, we will let our faith determine how we look at our circumstance. A little book titled Daily Grace contrasts two similar looking animals that reside often side by side in the streams and ponds of North America. One animal, the beaver, works throughout the day from toppling trees to create large river dams. The other animal, the river otter, delights in making game of everything. Mm. Otters catch what they need to survive, but also make time to chase after pebbles, slide down slopes, and tweak the tails of their more industrious neighbors. <laughs> Both animals live about the same length of time, but you have to believe that otters enjoy life just a bit more. <laughs> otters seem perfectly content if they have enough food and are happy to live in little mud holes along the river. Even in old age, they never miss the opportunity to toss a stone in the water and catch it before it hits bottom. So are you a beaver or an both animals have their place in creation. But I wonder how many people miss all kinds of opportunities in life because they are so narrowly focused on the serious business of making a living that they never get around to making a life. It all has to do with our attitude. If we are to make the most of every opportunity, we need to keep a clear head and we need to keep a positive spirit. 
what they are, St. Paul says. We need to give thanks in all things. He writes, Sing and make music in your heart to the Lord, always giving thanks to God the Father for everything. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. And here's the ultimate source of a positive spirit. It is always to give God thanks. And I've said it before, but it is a critical truth. The happiest people in the world are those who have an attitude of gratitude. Thank God for everything that comes your way is the best antidote in the world for, self de for the self-defeating attitude. Many people have the, that attitude that the world owes them something, owes them success, owes them happiness and the good things of life. The world owes us nothing. But we serve a gracious God who will pour out blessings on us if we open ourselves to God's goodness, God's grace, and love, and mercy. Trust God, love God, to bless your life. A writer, Ruby Banyan Gage of Leonia, sorry if I screwed that up, offers this uh, piece of advice. Let me share my little secret. When I feel that the world is caving in and my tears of hopelessness Hopelessness are just about to fall. I look down at my hands. I stretch out my fingers and I start to count my blessings. I say to myself, I have ten fingers. Fingers. One, two, three, four, five, seven, eight, nine, ten. I can move them all. My skin is clear. I can see, I can hear, I can talk, I can walk. I have a family, I have a home, I have friends. I have a job. Not everyone has these. I'm a very lucky person. I am whole and I can cope with this minor setback. Try it. In your darkest hour, at the height of a most unfortunate situation, count your blessings by starting with your fingers. Such good advice. Count your blessings. Develop an attitude of gratitude. And I'm saying to you that many people today are so fixated on what's wrong with our world that they will miss some of the blessing God wants to pour out on them. Make the most of every opportunity. Keep a clear head 